Do you believe in angels? And no, I'm not referring to the adorable cherubs on Christmas cards. I'm talking about celestial warriors, divine messengers whose influence shapes the fate of humanity. Today, we're going to dive into the mysteries of angelic figures so powerful that even the Bible remains silent about them. Get ready to discover the angel you've never heard of, but who might just reshape your perception of the spiritual world forever. If you think you know everything about angels, think again. You might want to reconsider your views. Stay with us on Pathways of Understanding, because what you're about to learn is so astonishing, you won't want to miss a thing. There are four angels mentioned in the scriptures, and through these scriptures we understand that angels are God's messengers. They are also sent by God to minister to the needs of the saints and all those who are heirs of common salvation. The Bible notes that there are multitudes of angels in heaven. According to Hebrews 12.22, the company of angels in heaven is beyond counting. However, we are not so familiar with their names. There's another misconception we should aim to understand. In most references to angels I've come across recently, it's quite apparent that authors assume they are the spirits of the dead returning to earth. Now, according to the scriptures, there's not a single truth in such a notion. Angels are celestial beings created by God. They are not the disembodied spirits of humans. Psalms 8.5 states that we were made a little lower than the angels. We are not even of the same order of beings. They were brought into existence before humans were created. When Adam and Eve sinned and were expelled from the garden, an angel at the gate prevented them from re-entering this paradise. Read Genesis 3.24. Angels were specially created. They neither marry nor are given in marriage, as per Matthew 22.30. Therefore, God's angels were already here before men were made by God. Each of them, except for the angels who fell and sinned with Lucifer, are holy angels of God. They love their Creator and obey all His commands. You read this in Psalms 103.20. There are various orders of the angelic host. Seraphim and Cherubim are mentioned in Isaiah 6.2 and Psalms 81. Angels are here to assist people, men and women, boys and girls. The Bible is a book of angels. Throughout the scriptures, we have only four angels named. This includes fallen angels and holy angels. Let's take a brief study of each of them and the roles they play according to the divine task they have been assigned. We begin with Lucifer, the fallen angel. Isaiah 14, 12 references Lucifer as one of the angels in heaven before his eventual fall as a result of his pride and conspiracy against the Most High. When the devil decided to exalt himself, we see in Isaiah 14 to 12 to 14, how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Lucifer was a beautiful creature in heaven. We see this in the Bible, a magnificent being. The prophet Ezekiel described him as the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Every precious stone was his covering. He was the anointed cherub who covers. He was perfect in his ways from the day he was created. Lucifer was fully adorned by the creator to reflect his glory. Now let's talk about Michael, the archangel. Michael is known as God's archangel, that is, the chief angel. The scriptures often refer to Archangel Michael as a chief prince of the heavens. The angel Michael is one of the archangels in heaven, associated with spiritual warfare. You may notice that most of the time he is mentioned in the Bible, there is a battle to be fought. Michael is rarely mentioned when there is no spiritual warfare occurring. He is a spiritual warrior specialized in combat. Archangel Michael will play a significant role in the end times events. As you would expect, we see in the last days of Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. At that time, 
Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. Note the carefully chosen words of the Bible. He watches over the children of his people. He is not just the angel associated with war, but also a protector. Moreover, he might be the angel of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, about which Paul writes, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, we read how the angel Michael led the battle against the devil and the fallen angels, and they were cast out of heaven. Pride led Lucifer to attempt to fight against the Almighty. Upon discovering his plans had been unmasked, he hardened due to pride and consequently tried to initiate a war. But it was pride that sponsored his fall. Archangel Michael and his armies warred against Lucifer until there was no longer a place for him in heaven. Revelation 12, 7, 8 recounts the events of the war in heaven in this way. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But they did not prevail, nor was their place found anymore in heaven. Pride is the path that leads to destruction. Michael is notable for his great strength in fighting battles. He defeated the devil and cast him out of heaven when iniquity was found in him. Again, Michael fulfilled his ministry of war when Daniel prayed for 21 days, but the answer to his prayer was delayed by the Prince of Persia. The Prince of Persia warred against another angel who was bringing the answers to Daniel's prayers. Due to Daniel's persistence in prayer, Michael had to intervene, rescuing the other angel from the hands of the Prince of Persia. The Prince of Persia warred against another angel who was bringing the answers to Daniel's prayers. Due to Daniel's persistence in prayer, Michael had to intervene, rescuing the other angel from the hands of the Prince of Persia. In Daniel 10, 12 to 13, the angel finally reached Daniel and said, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I am come for your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Michael defeated the prince of Persia, and also rebuked the devil in the Lord's name when disputing over the body of Moses in Jude 1.9. Michael is appointed by God to fight battles and has never lost one. The fact that Michael is an archangel proves that there are orders and hierarchies among the angels. For instance, it was not just Michael who fought against the devil and his angels in Revelation 12, 7 to 9, but he led other angels, showing he is their commander in chief. I would also like to point out that in Daniel 10, 13, Michael is referred to as one of the chief princes, suggesting that there are more in heaven. However, the Bible remains silent on this. The Angel Gabriel If you are familiar with the Christmas story, you probably recognize Gabriel as the name of the angel who brought Mary the news that she would become pregnant and give birth to Jesus. Gabriel is one of only two good angels named in the Bible, the other being Michael, whom we have just discussed. Gabriel is sometimes called Archangel Gabriel, but the Bible never gives him that title. Michael is clearly referred to as an Archangel in Jude, but Gabriel is not mentioned as such in the Holy Scripture. The main function attributed to the Angel Gabriel is to deliver good news to God's people. The Angel Gabriel is also associated with good news. He was sent to Zechariah the priest to deliver the message about the conception of John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus. On a specific day, Zechariah entered the temple, and we see in Luke 1.11 that an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. This angel was Gabriel. Gabriel gave Zechariah the news that his wife Elizabeth would bear a son. This news was surprising to Zechariah, who said to the angel in verse 18, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. 
In verse 19, the angel replied, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And continuing in verse 20, but now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Gabriel was also sent to Mary, who became the mother of Jesus. In Luke 1, 28, 31, he greeted her with the following words. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. He continued saying, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. It was also Gabriel who appeared to Joseph, Mary's betrothed, in Luke 1, 26, to persuade him not to abandon Mary, as her conception was by the Holy Spirit. Each time Gabriel appears in the Bible, he is delivering good news to people, which is why society has pictured him as a cute angelic messenger similar to Cupid. When Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, Mary and Daniel, all three were startled and overcome with fear. To Zechariah in Luke 1.12, when he saw the angel, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. To Mary in Luke 1.29, she was also troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this might be. And Daniel says in Daniel 8.17, So he came near where I stood, and when he came I was frightened and fell on my face. Gabriel had to reassure each of them before continuing with his messages. Now let's move to the last angel mentioned in the Bible. Most people don't even know he's in the Bible, much less described as an angel. The angel most people have never heard of makes his appearance in the last book of the New Testament, the book of Revelation. His name is Abaddon or Apollyon. Very few Christians have heard of an angel named Abaddon. They usually only know Michael and Gabriel, probably because they appear in various passages of the scriptures. Abaddon is the same as Apollyon and was mentioned in Revelation 9.11, which says, they had as king over them the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek, Apollyon. In Revelation 9.11, Abaddon is not a place, but the king of the locust swarm. Many commentators have identified Abaddon as Satan himself, but it is more likely that the angel of the abyss is one of the princes or powers under the devil's control. Ephesians 6.12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. He is probably one of the entities described in Ephesians. While Satan is known by many names, Apollyon is not one of them. Abaddon appears to be a demon working under his command and ruling over an abyss filled with locusts that will emerge in the end days. Abaddon means destroying angel. He is the angel in charge of the bottomless pit into which the devil will be cast. Abaddon is the king of the locusts that will come out of the bottomless abyss. As we conclude our journey through the enigmatic world of angels, from the splendor of Gabriel's messages to the mystery surrounding Abaddon, we've only scratched the surface of the celestial stories hidden within the scriptures. Remember, every angel we discuss today, Lucifer's fall, Michael's battles, Gabriel's announcements, and even Abaddon's dark reign, represents a deeper layer of understanding waiting to be uncovered. But this is just the beginning. Imagine what other secrets and astonishing revelations are waiting for you in our next videos. The world of spiritual beings is vast and full of untold stories. Do you want to dive deeper? Do you crave to know what lies beyond the commonly told tales? Each video on our channel is a gateway to understanding more about these celestial beings and their impact on our world and faith. Don't miss out on this opportunity to expand your knowledge and satisfy your curiosity. Join our community of seekers and explorers by subscribing to our channel. Like this video to support our journey into the unknown. Comment with your thoughts and insights and share this video with friends and family to spread the wonder. Your engagement not only fuels our quest for knowledge, but also shapes the direction of our exploration. What mysteries should we unravel next? 
What hidden truths are you eager to discover? Your interaction is the compass guiding our journey. Together, let's uncover the secrets of the spiritual realm and witness the unfolding mysteries of the universe. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Be a part of this extraordinary exploration. The next revelation awaits you.